Hello and uh, welcome to our first installment of our build log for our 3D printer. Uh, we're going to be building a mini Colossal 3D printer here. We've got most all of the parts that uh, we need aside from a couple which I will mention and we're going to go through those right now. Okay, going through our parts kit, we're going to start with our open beam rail and our printed parts there. Uh, the open beam rail in this case is 15 by 15 millimeters, and that's important because it needs to match the printed parts. The holes here are 15 by 15 millimeters. They have 20 by 20 millimeter open beam rail, and uh, it needs to be used with a 20 by 20 millimeter printed parts kit. So, so that's important to note. Uh, as long as your, your open beam and your printed parts match each other, you should be good to go. And they do in this case. So we've got our open beam rail right there. It's got a three millimeter slot that goes down the length of it that allows us to screw in uh, the screws and all of that kind of stuff. So it's really nice to work with for these kind of projects. It is a bit heavy, so it's not really useful for our multi-copters and things like that. But for this 3D printer, it's going to work out great. Um, our next item is our 3D printed parts kit. This includes all of the plastic parts that are needed, and these parts are actually printed out on a 3D printer as well. Uh, so we've got some 3D printed parts for our 3D printer. Um, next, we've got our Pyrex. This is 170 millimeters round Pyrex. It's three millimeters thick, and that's our print bed. We've also got our two millimeter internal diameter Teflon tubing. That's what we push the filament through before it gets to the hot end. And here's all the parts that are required for our diagonal arms. That includes epoxy, ball joints, the Trax is 5347s, some M4 threaded rod that is about 20 millimeters long, and our carbon fiber rods. Um, all of these are going to get put together into diagonal arms. And that is actually the first step of assembly and will be the next video here. Moving along, we've got our electronics. This is our Arduino Mega. This is our Ramps 1.4. Those will get plugged together and form the core of our print controller. This is a 30 amp opto-isolated relay which will control the current going to the heated bed. This is a 12864 LCD screen. Uh, this is actually going to be used to control the 3D printer without uh, hooking it up to the computer. It hooks into this ramps through these two cables and this adapter here. Over here we have our three physical end stop switches. Um, and then down here we also have our, our Bluetooth hookup, and this is our Bluetooth adapter. This Bluetooth hookup has a voltage divider wired into it that, uh, that converts the 5 volts of this down to the 3.3 volts that this needs. Finishing off our electronics, we have our stepper motors here. These are NEMA 17 stepper motors. Uh, they're Kaisan 1124090 part numbers. They have an extremely high torque. These are really good motors. Um, I like them a lot. Over here we've got our hardware kit for the printed parts. This is all the screws, bolts, and nuts that we need to bolt everything together. Uh, and right here we also have our bearing kit. Up here we've got our air tripper style bone extruder which is available on eBay as a kit. Uh, so all this comes together. It's about $45. Next to that, we've got our 12 millimeter rails. These rails have a bearing block on them, uh, so there's bearings there making that movement nice and smooth, and that's what moves our vertical arms up and down. Uh, next to that, we've got our belts and our pulleys. These are GT2 belts with 16 tooth pulleys. Now that makes up most of the parts that we need for our 3D printer. Okay, two parts that uh, we need to make the printer that are not here uh, that I'm going to go ahead and mention are the hot end and the heated bed. The J-head style hot end that I've ordered is coming from hotends.com and will be here probably tomorrow, so in plenty of time for the build. Um, the heated bed is coming from China and will take longer. It's more of an optional part, but it's highly recommended, especially if you're going to be printing in ABS or anything that's not PLA. Um, but that's pretty much all of the parts that are needed to actually assemble this. There are a couple specialized tools required also, and we're going to go over those next. In addition to the normal selection of hand tools such as pliers, screwdrivers, and allen wrenches that you will need to build this, there are a couple of specialized tools uh, that are required and one or two others that will make your life a lot easier when doing this project. The first of those I'm going to mention is thread taps. You'll need thread taps in both M4 and M5. Most notably you're going to need these for the diagonal arms which are threaded M4 on the ends, uh, but there's a couple other places that you need them as well. The second thing that you're going to want to have is some kind of jig for your diagonal arms. Now this is just two 3 16th inch dowels uh, screwed into some, some 
thicker dowels, uh, 215 millimeters apart. And that is squared off and it's designed to make all of our diagonal arms the same length. So once we actually put together our diagonal arms and glue them, they'll sit in that jig while they dry and that ensures that all of the, the arms are the same length and have the same orientation. Um, the other things you're going to want to have for this are, are fairly straightforward. You're going to want to have a multimeter for any project that uh, deals with electronics. It's just so you can troubleshoot things. Um, it can become a real hard project to do if you don't have a multimeter. Second thing you're going to have, because you've got a heated element that you're working with and a heated bed, is a non-contact thermometer. This non-contact thermometer here is only about $10 or $15 and will save you a lot of headaches when working with uh, hot beds, heated elements, things like that. You can actually just point it at it. Uh, pull the trigger and it'll tell you what the temperature is of the dot. Now, the third thing you're going to want to have is some kind of rotary tool, a Dremel basically. Um, this is going to be to finish off the plastic parts, to remount anything, drill any holes you need. Uh, so, so that's the majority of what you need. If you've got all of this together, you're probably ready to start building your 3D printer. I know I am.